हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ केमिकल इक्लोबियम आई विल स्टार्ट विथ रिकैप एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस मो अदर कंसेप्ट विच इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इन केमिकल इक्लोबियम वी स्टार्टेड विथ डिफिनेशन ऑफ इक्लोबियम ब्रियम एंड देन आई टोल्ड यू वॉट इज इक्लोब्रियम इज बेसिकली स्टेट ऑफ बैलेंस बिटवीन टू अपोजिंग फोर्सेस फोर्सेस That's what an equilibrium in a broader sense means. In case of chemical equilibrium, in case of chemical equilibrium, brium, we are talking about equilibrium in a chemical reaction. Suppose A to B, where A is a reactant. and b is the product there is also tendency to go from b to a and that is your reverse reaction here two forces are two forces are first rate of forward reaction and the second is rate of reverse reaction as in case of other equilibrium when rate of forward reaction forward reaction is equal to rate of reverse reaction we have condition what is called equilibrium equilibrium chemical equilibrium or physical equilibrium so two balancing forces are rate of forward reaction and rate of reverse reaction and when they becomes equal you have condition of equilibrium then we talked about your type of equilibrium constant constants and i introduced terms like kc kp and kx for a reaction a to b we define what is what we mean by kc kp and kx so kc is your concentration of b by concentration of a concentration of b by concentration of a kp is pressure of b by pressure of a and kx is mole fraction of b by mole fraction of a here i am talking about equilibrium concentration of b and equilibrium concentration of a so kc is your ratio of equilibrium concentration of b 
divided by equilibrium concentration of A. Similarly, Kp is your equilibrium pressure of B divided by equilibrium pressure of A. And similarly, Kx is your equilibrium mole fraction of B divided by equilibrium mole fraction of A. For a reaction like So, if you look at this reaction, what does that mean is A mole of reactant A reacts with B mole of reactant B. So, this is your number a stoichiometry and this is, these are reactants, reactants. These are C and D are product. So, this reaction tells you that A mole of A reactant A when combines with B mole of reactant B, it gives you C mole of C and D mole of product D. Okay. In that case, K C is written as concentration of C power this number C concentration of D power stoichiometry D divided by A cons power A and concentration of B raised to power your B. Whereas, K P is your pressure of C power C P D equilibrium pressure of D power D equilibrium pressure of A power A equilibrium pressure of B power B. Again, I will like to emphasize that these are equilibrium concentration. So, we can simply write E Q, E Q, E Q, E Q and here E Q, E Q, Q and EQ. So, these are the two terms which we came across in our first lecture. Once we have we know the concept of equilibrium constant, we can go and solve some equilibrium problem. Equilibrium problems. There are two types of equilibrium problem which we can come across your first is suppose you if I take this reaction And if I know what is the equilibrium concentration of A, B, C and D, if I know this, then I will be told to you know calculate K C, K P or K X. This is type 1 problem type 1 problem. There is another type in which in which K K C K P or K X is given and then we have to calculate equilibrium concentration of equilibrium concentration or pressure of A, B, C, D. So, we will go one by one 
and try to see how to calculate your equilibrium, how to solve the problem. Let us look at this case. In this problem, what you need to calculate is equilibrium constant. So, question is calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction below if they are present, they means this reactants or products A2, B2 or AB2 are present at equilibrium. Okay. So, what is given is 5 moles of A2 is present at equilibrium, 3 moles of B2 is present at equilibrium and 2 moles of AB2 is present at equilibrium and also you have been given what is the pressure and temperature of the uh, vessel. So, now question is to calculate K c equilibrium constant K c and we know this reaction is we have to calculate K c for this reaction. Okay. So, we know that K c is equal to A B 2 this is the concentration you must remember this is the concentration and you see number is 2. So, we will put 2. So, A B 2 concentration of A B 2 A square divided by product uh, uh, sorry product of these two uh, concentration of reactants. So, the reactants are A 2 and you can see the stoichiometry is 1. So, we will just put 1 and now concentration of B 2 and here a stoichiometry is 2. So, we will put 2. So, this is how we can calculate the value of K c. Now, you see this what is given to you? The things which is given is number of moles of A 2. So, you have been given N A 2 is equal to 5 mole. Other thing which is given is N B 2 that is your 3 mole and N A B 2 is your 2 mole. Now, you see what we need is concentration of A B 2 not number of mole of A B 2 and we know the relationship between concentration and number of mole. So, concentration is equal to n by v, where v is the volume. Okay. So, we need to find out the volume and for volume we can use your equation P v is equal to n R t. Assuming that all reactants behave as reactant and product behave as behave as an ideal gas behave as an ideal gas. So, in this case we can simply apply P V is equal to N R T and V is equal to N R T by P. Okay. So, N R T by P we know N, N is total number of moles of gases which is in this case 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 is equal to 8 plus 2 10. Now, if we know if we can calculate volume uh, we can calculate it because we know R is gas constant, N is 10, temperature is given 300 K and pressure is given this is 300 K and pressure is given is 8.21 atmosphere. So, it is quite simple to calculate the volume. Once you know the volume, we can simply calculate concentration of A 2, concentration of A 2 is number of mole of A 2 by volume 
a number of moles of A2 is your 5 and divided by V. And similarly, you can calculate your concentration of B2 which is NB2 by V and that is your 3 by V. And then you can calculate concentration of your AB2. We know that number of mole of AB2 is your 2. So, just divide by V. V which we calculated from NRT by P. NRT by P. Now, we have the concentration of, we are able to calculate concentration of A2, B2 and AB2. Now, it is easier to calculate Kc. Kc is simply AB2 square by A2 into B2 square and then you just put these numbers, you will be able to get the value of Kc. You will be able to get the value of Kc. So, now you can see that if equilibrium, equilibrium concentration is known, equilibrium concentration of reactant and products is known, it is easy to calculate your value of Kc. Now, in this problem, I will start with a heterogeneous reaction. In the previous question, it was a homogeneous equation, homogeneous equation. Why am I was saying homogeneous? Because your A2, B2 and AB2 was in gaseous phase. In this question, we will take a, an example of heterogeneous reaction. Now, you see this is your reaction. You can see this strontium chloride 2 H 2 O is it in solid phase, while water is in gaseous phase and this thing your SRCl2 6 H2O is in solid phase. So, now you can see that there are three phases present, two solids and one gas, two solid and one gas. So, this is a heterogeneous reaction and for that Kp is given 1 into 10 to the power minus 12 atmosphere minus 4. And then what you are needed to do is, what you need to do is to calculate equilibrium vapor pressure. So, you see this is the second type of question in which K p is given, your equilibrium constant is given and now you have to calculate equilibrium pressure. Okay? So, in that case you can simply start with K p and you see this two are solid phases, these two are solid phases and so you can simply ignore that and we can write K p is equal to P is 2 O. What is the power here? You can see at this point is 4, okay? 4 is the stoichiometry of water in gaseous phase. So, you just simply put 4 here. And we know from the problem that K p is equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 12. And so, you can simply write P s 2 O 4 is equal to 1 into 10 to the power 12. Okay? I just get this way. Okay? So, you can simply write this and then you will be able to calculate P s 2 O which is nothing but 1 into 10 to the power 3 atmosphere. So, you will be able to calculate equilibrium vapor pressure in this case if K p is given. Now, let us take third question and this came into came uh, in 2016 for IIT advance. The question is thermal decomposition of gaseous X 2 to gaseous X. So, it is basically dissociation reaction at 298 K takes place according to equation this. 
x2 is going to 2x basically dissociation is happening. At the start of the reaction there is one mole of x, x2 and no x. So, x2 is 1 initial mole of x2 is 1 whereas, 0 is the your number of mole for x. Okay. So, you started with pure x2. As the reaction proceeds, the number of moles of x formed is given by your beta. Sorry, this is beta. So, thus beta equilibrium is the number of moles of x formed at equilibrium. So, at equilibrium the concentration of this x is your beta. The reaction is carried out at a constant total pressure of 2 bar and then it is asking what is the equilibrium constant Kp for the reaction at 298 K in terms of beta equilibrium. Now, you see here, here equilibrium concentration of product is given, equilibrium concentration of product is given, equilibrium concentration of reactant is not given, okay. but you know initial concentration of, you know the initial concentration of your uh, initial mole of reactant. So, what are known? Let us see here. So, we have x 2 gas, this is the reaction to 2 x gas. So, what is known is initial concentration, we know that this is 1, 1 mole of x 2 and no x means 0 this. And what we know add is your equilibrium concentration of equilibrium concentration of this thing and this is beta equilibrium. Okay. And now question ask that what is the value of k p in terms of beta equilibrium. So, we know that k p is equal to pressure of x square you see 2 here. So, this is a square divided by pressure of x 2 pressure of x 2, okay, pressure of x 2. So, what we need to calculate is and this, this is you must remember this is equilibrium pressure, what we are talking about is equilibrium pressure. So, first thing is we need to calculate your number of moles of x 2, what is this thing and once we know number of moles of x 2 and number of moles of x, then we need to calculate mole fraction of x 2. So, this is your mole fraction of x 2 and mole fraction of x and then finally, we can calculate your k p. So, let us go and see. So, first step here is your calculation of calculation of equilibrium con concentration of your x2 so let's write this initial you have one mole zero and at equilibrium you have beta here okay now what is the number of mole of x 2, this is the first question. Okay. So, the way you can do is just by looking at the reaction and number of moles formed, number of moles of x formed at equilibrium. So, what this reaction tells you that if 1 mole of x 2 is used, 2 mole of x will form, 2 mole of x is formed. Okay. 
or you can just think in a opposite way if 2 mole of x is formed 1 mole of x 2 is used. Okay. So, if I think in a this way now think of this if beta mole of x is formed beta mole of x is formed how many moles of x 2 will be used. So, I told you 2 mole of x 1 mole of x 2 used am I right 2 x form 2 mole of x form means 1 mole of 2 mole of x form 1 mole of x 2 is used. So, 1 mole of x is formed in that case half mole of x 2 will be used and beta mole of x is formed means beta by 2 mole of x 2 will be used. So, what is the equilibrium mole of x 2? You have started with 1 mole of x 2 and now you know that beta by 2 mole of x 2 is being used. What does that mean? What is left out? You started with 1 and used up is beta by 2. So, left 1 is 1 minus beta by 2. So, this is 1 minus beta by 2. So, I hope this is clear. You must first calculate how much mole of x 2 is at equilibrium and that you can do by using the fact that beta mole of x is formed and 2 x mole of 2 mole of x is formed from 1 mole of x 2. So, what we have calculated is the equilibrium concentration for the reaction. So, x 2 gas going to 2 x gas. This is the reaction and we already calculated what is the equilibrium concentration or number of moles at equilibrium. So, this is 1 minus beta by 2 and this is your beta. 1 minus beta by 2 number of moles of x 2 and beta mole of x is present at the equilibrium. So, now we need to calculate Kp and for that we need to know partial pressure of x 2 and partial pressure of x. So, partial pressure of x 2 is equal to mole fraction of x 2. So, this is mole fraction of x 2 into total pressure, total pressure. And what is mole fraction? Mole fraction is your n of x 2 divided by total number of gaseous molecule multiplied by P. What is n t? Total number of molecule is number of molecule of x 2 and plus number of molecule of x and number of mole of x. So, n t is equal to 1 minus beta by 2 plus beta and this is equal to 1 plus beta by 2. So, your P x 2 is equal to N x 2, N x 2 is 1 minus beta by 2 divided by total number of molecule is 1 plus beta by 2 and into P whereas, P x is equal to n x by n t into P n x is your beta. So, beta divided by n t is your 1 plus beta by 2 into total pressure. So, now we know what is P x 2 and we know what is P x we can calculate what is K P value. Okay, so, now we can calculate K p and K p for this reaction is 
pressure of x square divided by pressure of x2 and just we calculated pressure of x pressure of x is your beta by 1 plus beta by 2 into p and this is whole square divided by 1 minus beta by 2 by 1 plus beta by 2 into p. So, this is equal to k p is equal to your beta square by 2 plus beta by 2 a square into p a square divided by your 2 minus beta and 2 minus beta divided by 2, 2 plus beta divided by 2 into p. p p cancels out, this term cancels out, this 2 2 cancels out. So, what you are left with is your beta sorry this is your beta. So, this is beta square by 2 plus beta square into this 2 goes up. So, 4 into p divided by 2 minus beta this 2 plus beta goes up 2 plus beta sorry, 2 plus beta and this is square terms cancels out. So, what you are left with is 4 p beta square by 4 minus beta square and since p is equal to 2 atmosphere you can simply write 8 beta square by 4 minus beta square. Okay. So, this type of question can also come in which initial concentration is known one of uh, equilibrium concentration of one of the product is known and then you need to calculate k p you can easily do that first you need to calculate equilibrium concentration of the reactants for which equilibrium concentration is not known and then you can simply calculate the value of k p. So, in this question you have to you have been given equilibrium concentration of a b c the reaction is a going to b plus c and equilibrium concentration is known 4.6, 2.3, 2.3 moles per liter at 25 degree Celsius. If 2 moles per liter of A are removed, calculate the equilibrium concentration of A, B and C at same temperature. Okay. So, it is going to utilize, it is basically a mixture of type 1 and type 2 questions, mixture of type 1 and type 2 questions. In this first we have to calculate K p or K c and then you disturb the equilibrium by removing your A and then you need to calculate equilibrium concentration of A B C and here you can utilize the fact that you have already calculated K c. So, let us think of this question. So, reaction is A going to B plus C okay. and equilibrium concentration is known, equilibrium concentration is given, equilibrium concentration is given, this is A is 4.6, B is 2.3 and C is 2.3. So, value of K c will be what simply concentration of B into C divided by A, you quite simple to calculate and you can do 
b is 2.3 into 2.3 divided by 4.6. Okay. So, this is quite simple to calculate Kc, but now question is that that 2 moles per liter of A is removed. So, basically this is equilibrium, what you are doing going to do is you remove 2 moles of this 4.6 minus 2. What happens in that case is now it is no longer at equilibrium, no longer at equilibrium. Now, reaction is no longer at equilibrium. Now, question is which side it will shift. Okay. So, 4.6 minus 2 and then you have 2.3, 2.3 this side 2.3, but equilibrium is not disturbed. So, at equilibrium what can happen? This is your 2.6. Okay. So, suppose reaction basically goes from this to this side. Okay. In that case what will happen? You can simply write 2.3 minus x, suppose x mole of C reacts with x mole of B and x mole of A is formed. This is at new equilibrium. Okay. So, in this case K C is equal to your 2.3 minus x square divided by square because you are multiplying concentration of B with concentration of C. So, 2.3 minus x square and divided by 2.6 plus x, 2.6 plus x and this you have already calculated that was 2.3 square divided by 4.6. Now, you see you have a equation there is only one unknown and you have one equation so, you will be able to calculate x, you will be able to calculate x and so, you will be able to x calculate x, then you can just put it here and now you know what will be the equilibrium concentration of A, B, C. Here I told that reaction will go to your left hand side or reverse reaction will take place. How you can tell that? It is quite simple. Here we know that K C is equal to B into C by your A. What we are removing is this one. Okay. If you take out A, this K C is constant. You must remember K C is constant. Okay. K C is constant. Okay. So, if I remove a and what will happen? Concentration of B and C will decrease, so that B into C by A remains constant and that is why B and C, when B and C can decrease, when reverse reaction will take place. And so, we can simply write that C is decreasing by x amount, so B will also decrease by x amount, both are reacting, they must react in the same stoichiometry and so if concentration decreases by x for b and c concentration of a will increase by x and so you can simply write 2.6 plus x 2.3 minus x 2.3 minus x and so kc can be calculated okay so this is about the problem which can be solved using concepts from your equilibrium constant.
Okay. Now, let us talk about another important term in chemical reaction which is called reaction quotient. I have already introduced this to you, but now I will again define and then finally, I go and tell you what is the importance of this term. So, I told you that if I start with some okay, some reactant A, I am talking about a reaction A going to B and suppose we start with reaction A uh, sorry uh, only reactant A in the box and what will happen is this will convert to B first. Suppose one of A went to B, this is your B. Then I wait for some more time and then you get your one more molecule goes to B. Again wait for some time, one more molecule goes to B, suppose. Okay. After some time, what after some time what will happen is that this now does not change. If I suppose wait for, for a few more hours and what you are able to see that there is no change. In that case, what we say that this we have reached the uh, condition of equilibrium, okay? condition of equilibrium and your B by A which is B equilibrium by A equilibrium which is basically 3 by 3 this is 1 and this is your K P of this reaction, K P a uh, K C of this reaction. Here you must keep in mind that this is the equilibrium concentration of B by A. So, this is concentration at this point, not at this point, okay? because in this state equilibrium has not risk. So, this is not the equilibrium concentration of A and B. What is this is your Q reaction quotient and that is again equal to B by A, but now this is not a concentration at equilibrium, this is concentration at any time. Okay. So, Q changes with time, Q changes with time and at this point Q is equal to 1 by 5, 1 by 5. Q is different from equilibrium constant is that equilibrium constant is fixed at one temperature while Q changes with time. So, suppose I start with pure A, pure A and so you have pure A quantity your A, then what will happen? Suppose reaction is going from A to this is your extent of reaction, it is going from here to here, and this is somewhere is the equilibrium constant. Okay. So, in this side, in this side, the reaction quotient product by reactant. So, before reaching equilibrium your reactant is more in number while product is less, product is less. In this case Q will be if I compare with P equilibrium, if I compare with P equilibrium by R equilibrium, 
our equilibrium, what we expect is your product since product is less reactant is high. So, this quantity is smaller than this. So, Q is less than your K before equilibrium is reached. Now, what happens is if I start with pure B, pure B. In that case, again there will be some time at which only one of product has gone to reactor. So, in this you see this we are starting with B and this is your A. So, in this case Q is I am again calculating only Q for a forward reaction. So, I am not going to change this B by A. So, B by A will be your 5 by your 1 and now Q is greater than K. In this case your reverse reaction reverse reaction will take place. So, we have three different conditions one is Q is your less than K then reaction will proceed to proceed in forward direction Q is equal to K then your equilibrium is established and Q is greater than K implies a reverse reaction will take place. Reverse reaction will take place. So, if I plot reaction quotient Q with time you get this kind of curve this is q is greater than k and this is for q is less than k q is your product by reactant so q is decreasing what does that mean product is converting into reactant so reverse reaction is taking place reverse reaction reverse reaction is taking place taking place reverse reaction is taking place while if q is less than k then q increases with time q increases with time and q when q will increase when p increases and r decreases and this means forward reaction so this is for forward and this is for reverse reaction And this is being used to know whether a reaction will go in a forward direction or reverse direction. So, simple thing is if reaction quotient is greater than K, then reverse reaction is spontaneous. If reaction quotient is equal to K, then your reaction is at equilibrium. When reaction quotient is less than K, then 
your forward reaction will proceed. Forward reaction will proceed. The another graph which we can think of is G versus extent of reaction, extent of reaction. So, suppose you have G of A is here, G of B is here, reaction will like to take place. What we expect that this should go down like this, but this does not happen and that is basically why equilibrium exists and I told you that there will be a deep, there will be a deep and this deep the minima will be obtained at equilibrium. And this minima is due to delta G of mixing when A and B is getting mixed, A and B is getting mixed. A, when A and B gets mixed, entropy increases and so delta A G uh, makes a contribution to your total delta G. What do we mean by delta G is basically if I go from here to here, delta G is less than. So, till this point your delta G is you can see B G B minus G A delta G is your less than 0 and in this resign delta G is greater than 0 and so reaction will your go from B to A in this resign reaction it will go to A to B and this is the when q is less than k and this is when q is greater than k. So, reaction quotient is less than k, then forward reaction is taking place and reaction quotient is greater than k, then it is not, uh, reverse reaction is spontaneous and at this point where q is equal to k, we have equilibrium. So, there are three very important point. Is first is when q is less than k c or k your reaction will proceed in forward direction, reaction will proceed in forward direction. Second, when q is equal to k, then reaction is in equilibrium. And third is q is greater than k, reaction will proceed in proceed in reverse direction reverse direction so reaction quotient and q reaction quotient and quotient this q and equilibrium constant constant k can be used to know the direction of the reaction, direction of the reaction. For example, take this case A going to B and suppose I know that k equilibrium constant k c is your value is 4. And suppose in a reaction mixture we have 2 moles at certain time t or you are putting suppose uh, 
the 4 mole per liter of this and 2 mole per liter of this per liter of B. Now, can we predict, can we predict whether reaction is going in forward direction or reaction is going in reverse direction? We can do that since we have Kc and we know the value of Q. In this case, Q is what? 2 by 4 and so Q is your half. Now, you see here what is Kc? Kc is 4. So, Q is your less than K, Q is less than K and so reaction will go, reaction will proceed in, proceed in forward direction, forward direction, reaction will proceed in forward direction. Now, you can take another case A going to B and suppose Kc is half, Kc is half and if I take a box which has box and add suppose 2 mole of A and 4 mole of B and then I want to know whether A will convert to B or B will convert to A. What we need to do is simply calculate the value of Q and Q is your simply B by A, B by A and this is your 2, 4 by 2, so 4 by 2 is 2. Now, you see Q is greater than Kc and so the reaction, so basically your reverse reaction is will proceed. So, more B will be converted to A and what you will get is 4 minus x, 2 plus x and you can calculate what is the amount of x converting by simply adding using Kc, Kc is equal to 4 minus x by 2 plus x and that should be equal to half, that should be equal to half. So, first thing we can simply know in which direction if I mix, if we mix a and B, A and B, in which direction, which direction reaction will proceed, whether in from B to A or A to B. And if I know the value of this, we can know by comparing the value of Q, Q, K and Q, K and Q. And if I know the value of K and Q, value of K and Q, value of K and concentration of, concentration of A and B we can also tell that how much, how much A goes to B or, or how much B goes to A if reaction goes to A, if reaction, if reverse reaction, if reverse reaction is happening if reverse reaction is taking place, taking place. It is very, you know, you just see, just simple to concept of Kc and Q, we are able to tell not only 
we are able to tell direction of reaction, direction of reaction, but we are also able to tell, we will be also able to tell how much, how much uh, your reaction, reaction, uh, how much your re reaction will go in forward direction, forward direction or reverse direction or reverse direction. So, there is we will be able to calculate that how much A goes to B or B goes to A, how much A goes to B or B goes to A. So, here we will stop in this lecture. In next lecture, we will discuss about Lee-Satellier principle. Thank you very much.